This morning we've heard one of the most personal confessions of Paul, our patron saint. And it's worth our stopping for a moment to reflect on Paul's words, something I expect has been done many, many times from this pulpit before. This is what he writes to that church he loves in Corinth. To keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Just what was the thorn in the flesh that Paul writes about to that church? That question has fascinated scholars and commentators going right back to the very earliest years of the church. Tertullian's third century answer was that Paul had a consistent earache. St. Chrysostom thought that Paul had a recurring headache. Other writers thought it was malaria or epileptic seizures or poor eyesight, maybe cataracts or maybe glaucoma or maybe he had arthritis really badly. And some commentators in our own day have proposed that it wasn't a physical ailment at all, but something else that troubled Paul, that he had a desire for something that he was wrestling with, that he felt was wrong or he was ashamed of. We can't help wondering about it because Paul's language is so suggestive and so opaque. It's reasonable for us to think that the people he wrote to knew what he was talking about, so they didn't need it explained to them what his thorn in the flesh was. But it might be that the point for us isn't what Paul's mysterious ailment was. It might be instead what he decided to do about it. Whatever else might be true about Paul's thorn in the flesh, what we know for certain is that he wished it wasn't there. He saw it as an obstacle, a hindrance in his effectiveness, in his vocation to be a messenger to the Gentiles. For him, it was something that compromised him, that got in his way, something that made him less than the man he wanted to be. And here's something else we know about it. He could hardly think of anything else. It was the sort of thing he could not put out of his mind. The Greek word that we translate as tormented is kolophize, kolophize. It means something closer to being beaten, as though Paul was getting beaten up every day by this thing that was bothering him. He is always struggling with it. Maybe you don't have a physical ailment that causes you chronic pain every day. But pretty much every one of us has this kind of torment. All of us have a sense of that one thing that if we could only get past, if only it would go away, if only it were not true, we would be so much happier. We would be so much more effective at what we do, so much better at being in the world and doing what God wants us to do. What's your thorn in the flesh? What's the thing you wish was different about your life? All of us have one. But Paul's wisdom is this. When we allow our energies and our attentions to be focused on the obstacle we feel, then all we really accomplish is to make them into bigger obstacles. When we invest our attention in those things, we make ourselves smaller and we make our problems larger. This week I had a good and long talk with Giulia Bonoldi, who runs the fundraising efforts for the Joel Nafuma Refugee Center here at St. Paul's. Giulia told me about her earliest days working in the center when she was just beginning there after a very successful career in magazine publishing. She would come to the center and she would go down those stairs into the basement and as she did she would feel the tension rising in her stomach 
and she would wonder, what am I doing here? What difference can I possibly make? This problem is so overwhelming, and I'm just one person. What can I do? But after a while, she told me, things began to change. She would come to the center, and she would go down the stairs and still have that feeling, but she would do her work, and then as she came back up the stairs into the garden to go home, she would think, this is where I'm supposed to be. There's nowhere else I'm supposed to be. What I'm doing makes a difference, and it matters. Now, what changed? The problem was still as big. Her skills were still the same. But she learned something about the truth of what Paul writes about this morning, that a big part of being a disciple isn't about what you can do well. It's about what you choose to do about the things that might get in your way. I don't know what that is for you. I know what it is for me. And I know that if I let it be the focus of my attention and my prayers like Paul did, asking three times, God, please take this away from me. If I do that, it will become even more of an obstacle to making the most of the few gifts God has given me. And I also know that if I try to think of that as an opportunity rather than an obstacle, the things I wish I were better at, or the skills I wish I had, all of that can instead become a way for me to invite other people into the work of this ministry that we are called to do together. I am sure that those disciples going out on the road for the first time after Jesus sent them must have walked along those dusty paths thinking, there is no way I can do this. I have no idea how to do what Jesus has asked me to do. But instead they chose to focus on the change they saw that they were making. And that change began to change the world. So don't let your obstacles become your obsession. Don't let us waste our energies wishing for what might be and miss the chance to make the most of all that we have been given. Let us see our weaknesses as gifts to our creativity, as reasons to imagine new ways to use what strengths and skills we have so that God's goodness will be seen through all that we do here. So let us not pray for easier lives. Let us pray to be more willing people. Let us not pray for tasks equal to our powers, but for powers equal to our high tasks. For then the doing of our work will be no miracle, but we will be the miracle. Every day, we will wonder at ourselves, at the richness of life that has come to us by the grace of God. Amen.